Everyone, it's a new year and uh, that means we have new fig varieties. So this is not a complete list of what we're rooting or what we will add to this upcoming season, this upcoming 2020 season. But it is a good indicator and a good start. We probably have another 20 or so varieties in addition to what you see here and what we're gonna go over that I will be adding to my collection. Um, but for the most part, everything's already in here. Um, at least from my own cuttings, from uh, many of my trades, we're just waiting patiently for the remainder. And I wanna talk about the varieties that I've added that are new um, and the varieties that are from our own trees that I'm propagating more of uh, because I like them so much. Uh, for example, one is Neruchiola de Elba. And I basically have an entire bin here of just Neruchiola de Elba. Uh, it really is an incredible fig that we've mentioned in prior videos. Here's some more on this section of that bin. Um, it really is uh, one of the best figs I can grow here in this climate. Um, overall, has a great flavor, incredible drying capabilities. Uh, what else do we add here? So we have a hardy Hoboken. This is a hardy Chicago type that my friend Danny found um, in Hoboken, New Jersey, I think. I think that's where Hoboken is. Uh, maybe it's, it's somewhere on the edge of New Jersey and New York. Um, but essentially this tree has been growing there for a long time. It's supposed to taste a lot like cherries. It's a hardy Chicago type that's supposed to be a standout. Another standout hardy Chicago type is Norella. I'm going to thank my buddy Bill for these, um, these cuttings here. Norella, uh, I was told is one of the thicker and more jammier, um, hardy Chicago types, kind of like my Azores dark. And also I've noticed that with my Malta Black, but we are indeed again, making copies of some Azores Dark. Um, we also have the one fig, which is a, a favorite of Bill's. It's by my estimation, a blue Celeste. We have a number of blue Celeste that we grow and we're gonna compare mine to uh, the one fig here. We also have Medina from Ed. I don't really know too much in the background of this fig. I forget where it comes from exactly. But, um, excuse the camera there, guys. But it, it's a it's an interesting fig for sure. It definitely looks very promising and Ed seems to like it and uh, that's why we're adding it. We also have an English brown turkey unknown. I don't really know what to call it. It doesn't really have a name. This is from um, um, somebody that decided to send me this. I thought it was very interesting. I'm not a big fan of English brown turkeys anymore. I've gotten rid of them all. This is one that we grafted last year and I tried to air layer it. We successfully grafted it, but I couldn't air layer it off. And the tree that it's on, I planted it in the ground and we had to cut it back to six to 12 inches. So I air layered off what I could, but the air layer may not survive. So I took some cuttings and we're gonna try to root this and see if we can salvage this variety give us at least a backup for the for that variety it seems to be some sort of weird english brown turkey that's improved and i think it has a lot more potential that way we also have barile which is from uh paulo's collection in italy originally and this fig is i think one of his favorites i've seen photos of it grown here and also photos of it uh, that Paulo has has posted and um, people have posted at his at the Pomona Gardens um, in Italy uh, it's an incredible fig this is going to be I think one of the better figs that we can we can grow there's also Corinth which my friend Danny Gentile as well as others really love and have told me about this is one of the first figs that I sort of heard about um, at the Staten Island Fig Festival where Danny became the fig king and I interviewed him as well as Peter Kenderi and a bunch of other um, 
known hobbyists and they basically told me or Danny told me that this was his favorite fig and that I've since learned it's got a great texture to it is what I was told um, it's so it's superior in that way to other honey figs but it's also very early which is hard to find a lot of like Kadota types and dotado types are not that early uh, so any honey fig that I basically look for has got to be early and this one fits the bill I'm interested to see what happens called the Rona I don't know if we're gonna have success with this this variety unfortunately um, but I'm happy to have it and uh, this is a, a fig from ponds that really is promising for a lot of people in the United States should be mid-season um, quality fruit this is Southport unknown from uh, North Carolina a, a grower there named Carol I'm not sure if Carol's watching but shout out to Carol she grows this fig and uh, she posted about it on our figs and I thought it was super interesting saying that she thought it was better than Smith um, so how could I turn that up it looked incredible Corio Province um, similar grower grower and our figs posted about it I thought it looks really interesting uh, this one's growing I forget where the this originates exactly but this one's fruited in Arizona so they're both common unknowns we don't know what they are but they definitely seem very promising and very interesting uh, we have Col Noir in the back which I think is a a synonym for sucret um, I'm pretty certain of that and uh, sucret's one of my favorites we're making six copies of that we have strawberry over in the corner LSU strawberry uh, from one of the the trees at LSU um, my buddy Brian I believe he told me I think Smith is in its parentage potentially I think he believes that I'm not sure if he has 100% um, certainty on it but nevertheless it's a very tasty fig I have I know two growers who love it and they're very experienced growers so that's that's a great sign if uh, and if you get one grower that really likes a fig um, but it's just one grower you may not think too much of it but if it's two or even three even better um, that's really something so I think um, that has a lot of potential here for sure um, and I do believe it's similar ish to like strawberry verte and white Madeira so I'm excited to see how it compares to those two which are kind of my tops and you can see another white Madeira right here that we're propagating we've got some De La Roca that I absolutely love my favorite fig in terms of flavor Conde Thierry's favorite in France we have some Smith we got some Colonel Littmans to hopefully replace Black Madeira. We got some Narino, which is a synonym for Moro de Caneva, one of my favorite figs. In my top five, I think I put it this year in our video. Maybe it's uh, only in my top 10, but still, yeah, I think it's in my top five. It's an incredible fig. We also have Aishia Black from the Port Carolles Conservatory in France. At least that's where it originates. And hopefully, it is the same as the UC Davis version. That's the goal and that's the hope. I don't know exactly, but uh, I'm propagating it in hopes that it is a healthier version of Aishia Black UC Davis. Because uh, it is very healthy. I have a number of trees of it and it's proven to be extremely healthy. We also have uh, Capol Kurt Negra. It's got a nice texture to it, but I don't think it's going to do all that well here. I'm still on the fence about it. But it is a very tasty fig. Del Sinuami Gran. Similar story. Really tasty fig. Both from Ponza's collection. Here's Sucret. Originally from Bode. Again, very similar to Col Noir. Um, we have down here some Martin and Cablanca. Um, thank you, Zuni, for those cuttings. We also have some Black Zadar. Um, these four of them right here are Black Zadar. I've written on the on the side of the pot. But um, that's an interesting fig, and I hope mine's going to fruit this year. It has, I pretty much confirmed it to be true, but I haven't gotten anything 
significant from my tree so we'll have to figure out if it's worth growing here but I do think it's a wor it's a fig worth spreading around in other climates at the very least and uh, it's quite rare and it's a very weird unique fig that people should have so at the very least we should we should definitely um, I think it's worthy of propagating we also have a number of other figs that I'm propagating for my own trees. We have about 10 Campaneri trees that we're propagating, as well as uh, six, let's see, six, um, about six Verdino del Nord, AKA Figoin. We got some San Baggio back in there, a fig that's quite rare from Paulo's collection. We have a Thermalito back in there. Tough to get to these guys. We have Noir de Valone. Thank you, Leon, for those. Negra de Agde that we're propagating. And we also have um, a Morris Nigra Mulberry that we're propagating in there. That doesn't have a tag, but that's, uh, that's what it is. I'm gonna put you guys down for one second. We'll get this last bin. And you guys will be on your merry way to another YouTube video. Just gotta clear some room here. All right. So we've got some Vertolino. This actually comes from Paolo's collection as well, another Italian fig, originally. We have uh, Brian Zolo Rosso. This one has a lot of potential, as well as Vertolino. Um, I can see them both breaking into my top 10 as potentials quite easily. Uh, same thing with Barile and uh, what else could probably break in. Maybe the Blue Celeste and one of the hardy Chicago types we picked up. I mean, there's a lot of potential in here. If it didn't have potential, I wouldn't be propagating it. But I would say Brian Zolo Rosso and Vertolino have a really high chance of... Uh, of becoming one of the top tier figs I have. We're propagating, I think, like five or six Brianzolo. Uh, yeah, six. And then we have three Vertolino. Um, and the rest is Fico Seco, which uh, Fico Seco is another synonym for Moro de Caneva. So in total, we have about, I don't know, eight. Moro de Caneva that we're propagating between Narino and Fico Seco. Um, again, very incredible tasting figs overall, phenomenal. Uh, Vertolino is a, a pretty small, a smaller green fig with a red interior. It's quite early. Uh, it could be the earliest Adriatic type right next to Green Michurinska. Uh I think it's going to be better than Green Michurinska personally. My friend Maddie loves it, raves about it. Um, same thing with Brian Zolos, he loves this one as well. And there's a grower in, um, what is it, Brussels or the Netherlands, I think. Somewhere around there. Uh, he loves this fig as well. For someone in any, anyone in a shorter season climate, it's got a unique flavor profile. Very creamy, I think he's described it as. Um, and it's also extremely early. This fig, I think, I have a feeling, is very similar to Zephyro, and I have a feeling it's the same damn thing. We're going to find out, but I really do have a strong hunch on that one, and I wish I could propagate Zephyro for those of you guys who know about that and know that I've talked about it in the past. Um, my Zephyro this year just didn't grow. And uh, we took too many cuttings last year and the tree got runted, sort of, uh, because it was grafted onto a capra fig, or it was grafted onto a franken fig, and then the franken fig had three varieties on it, and two of the varieties took off while this one didn't have enough auxin, or the auxin was suppressing that lower growth because I pruned Zephyro too much, and uh, I'm paying for it right now. So I wish I had more Zephyro cuttings to propagate. I wish I had more fruit last year. We'll be back next year with it. Um, but it is a bit of a shame. So uh, 
Yeah, that's kind of the, the tour here of the new figs for the 2020 season. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know what you guys are growing this year. What are your new figs? What are you propagating the most? What do you guys like the most? Um, we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Check us out on FigBid. We have some cuttings still for sale. These trees will be for sale in the spring. Um, some of these anyway. And then, um, yeah, check us out on Fig Boss, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. All right, take care, guys.